Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are back here with Jacqueline, the owner of Vita Jewel, and so much more. Welcome. How are you doing today? Wonderful. Please Just... introduce yourself, darling. Well, everybody calls me Jewel Girl. It's my nickname. I distribute uh, crystal water bottles in Canada, and I manufacture my own line of crystal essence products. And let's talk overall. What are crystal essence products? What is the fascination and amazement about crystals, and how could they help us? <laughs> So crystals are, well, I guess first, many people don't know about computers and how they're used in, or sorry, crystals and how they're used in everyday life. And what most people don't make the connection with is silicone and the fact that silicone is silicia, which is also clear quartz. Oh. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. You taught me something new. So it's clear quartz. Okay. I'm thinking about like my silicone. I have something downstairs that like it. The heating pad sits on, it's full of silicone. It's like my baking products. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and so in a natural health, um, you know, the natural health industry, silicia is what makes hair, teeth, and nails strong. It's used for bone growth and development, as well as purging or getting rid of things that we don't want um, in our systems. So silicia is kind of like little fragments or needles, and they can puncture, um, you know, different parts of your body and help let stuff. Out. So for separation, um, when you're wanting to, you know, cleanse things out, you would use in, increase your intake of silicia. Wow. Yeah. A, Go ahead. Oh no. So where do we get the silicia from? Explain this. Sand. Interesting. So, yeah. So um, they use it in the computer. Well, watches. So silicia is used as um, quartz. Most of our watches nowadays have quartz um, movements in them, and silicia has a frequency of 60 hertz. So because the frequency is 60 Hertz and there's 60 seconds and 60 minutes, it's what helps our timepieces keep correct and accurate time. Now, the reason we use them in computers is because they increase the flow of um, information and information processing through our computers because they're transmitters of energy. So if we think about that, and the fact is, is that our bodies are actually human computers. Like I like to think of it that computers and everything electronic is modeled after the human body. The only problem is, is it's not as perfect as the human body. And that's where I think we run into limitations with computers. Whereas when you go into spirituality and you activate and learn how to use your own computer, um, you know, the things you can do with that are absolutely amazing. And so one of the things I would bring up um, when people well, I guess myself, one thing I noticed is um, the more energy work that I did and the more energy that I was putting through my system, the higher levels of silicia I needed in my body and the more silicia that I believe I was using up when I was doing those things. Wow. So yeah, crystals are all around us. Um, they're experimenting with different crystals and solar panels, actually. Um, Alexandrite is a crystal that they're using. Well, they're trying to make a synthetic version because it makes solar panels way, way more effective. Alexandrite's the most expensive um, crystal in the world or one of them. And so obviously you're not going to, you know, fill solar panels with it. So they're trying to develop synthetic Alexandrite crystals to use in solar power technology as well. Wow. What about the straws? I know those are on your website as well. The Vita Jewel straws. Now, so if we're sipping out of a straw that's made out of a crystal how does that help us and how does that work well theoretically that doesn't help you it's the crystal attached to the end of your straw that's got it sitting. okay I, I thought the straws were made out of crystal like, whoa well like, and, and like, i mean they are like... <laughs> your glass silicia is found in glass as well so um that does help but yeah i mean so leaving your your crystal or your glass straw in your glass of water theoretically i haven't you know, tested that, but um, yeah, I believe that would do something to your water as well. But mostly the crystal on the end of the straw sitting in your glass for seven to 10 minutes is what brings about the change. And you have different crystals for different things chakras. in a sense for your chakras. That's it. Explain yes. that to us again. Um, they're telling me no. Is that okay? Oh, of course not. You don't have to. Yes. Okay. And now everyone, wait, no, you got to understand people are like, well, who's telling her no? Explain. You also are an intuitive. How do I describe you? Because now people on the radio are like, wait, what? <laughs> Who are you talking to? So 
everyone, um, angels, people angels. that have passed over, um, people who live here, their higher selves, your inner child, uh, spirit animals, crystals, you name it, everything has a frequency that it gives off. Okay. And when you can tap into and understand frequencies, the sky's the limit really to your own personal radio antenna and what you can be picking well, up. What, what do they want you to discuss today here on your show? And by the way, let's point out the website. Can I do that? Is that okay? Yes. <laughs> so Vita Jewel, it's V-I-T-A-J-U-W-E-L.ca. Again, you're based out of Canada, even though you're worldwide. So what would they and you like to discuss today? Well, and first I should say, I'm not Vita Jewel. I'm the Canadian distributor of the Vita Jewel products. So there's a head office for Vita Jewel in Germany and the U.S. Um, head office, which is why any U.S. customers can order through the U.S. That website. U.S. Okay, got yes. it. Yes. Um, they want me to discuss last week, actually. Okay. So I'm supposed to tell you about last week because I finished the podcast and I started getting downloads of messages. And it was sort of confusing to me because all these different things come to me and I have all these ideas of what I think we might talk about or what they might want me to talk about. And then the way that last week lined up, it all got totally, you know, thrown the window and I kept hearing it's perfect. It's perfect. Don't worry about it. You don't understand it now, but everything about it was perfect. So I want to just take you through the events leading up to last week, if I can. Sure. sure. And then take you through the events that happened following it. Because for me, it's a real life miracle and a real life Christmas story. And I think you might find it really interesting. I think so. Go ahead. I'm Is that okay? To hear it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. And I guess the thing about Christmas is Christmas is the season of miracles. And the thing that we don't think about often enough is the manger. So the manger has been coming to me and the fact that Christ was born in a manger. And what does that mean? And it doesn't mean that Jesus was born in a manger. It means that the most spectacular things in life can come out of really nothing at all. So miracles don't happen the way we think they're going to happen. They happen in the little tiny details that we overlook on a continual basis that we always think mean nothing. And that's, in my opinion, or what I've been told is um, one, if not the true meaning of the manger and the birth of Christ into a manger. So um, show them the two. Okay. So everyone, I think I've explained everyone in my life is super, um, psychic and intuitive. And I get messages constantly just from the people that, you know, are in my close circle of friends. So I have this woman and she gave me a plethora. So when I used to do um, staging and decorating, I helped people live with less and I had a 100 item wardrobe and that was including summer and winter items, coat, shoes, everything. So I've always lived not always, but I, you know, I've gone through this period in my life where everything was really minimalistic. So a few weeks ago, this woman um, gives me a whole bunch of stuff and included our, a multitude of mitts or winter gloves and tubes. And she goes to me, these are very, very important. You need to keep these. And they came with a whole bunch of other stuff. And I think she knew that I wouldn't be able to handle it all. And I would get rid of, you know, all of this stuff, but I made sure to keep the tube. So, um, Two weeks ago, after the first radio podcast, I received a call that we were going to be turning this into video. Now, this is interesting because I, um, I had fairly natural hair for the last couple of years, and it was something my husband wanted to see me in, and he really loved my natural hair. And I kept getting that I needed to get it touched up and I needed to get it redone. And then I had two you know, intuitive psychic experiences within a couple hours. And I'm like, that's it. I'm booking a hair appointment. So I booked a hair appointment and the podcast um, was, you know, the morning that day, the radio podcast and my hair appointment was for 5 PM that night. Meanwhile, in between that, I get a call from the studio that the podcasts are going to go from um, radio to video in the course of a week. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you for that message. <laughs> <laughs> because how do you get a fabulous hairdo over Christmas, you know, days in advance, but I already had one booked. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the thing that I was concerned about is the girl that I go to, um, she works out of her, she has a salon in her basement and she only has so many colors and, you know, different things available to her. And five years ago, I started getting downloads about this brightly colored hair that I would have one day. And I thought that this might be the time. And she did, she didn't have any of those colors. 
So she said, well, I do have a purple and I can do blonde and we're going to stick that in your hair. And I just heard whatever she chooses, it's perfect. Don't worry about it. It's perfect. So she does it. And then she goes, how about a trim? And I've been trying to grow my hair out for a very, very long time. And I hear you need a trim. So I say, okay. And she holds <laughs> up the hair with, you know, this much hanging off. And she's like, how about this? And I hear, tell her yes. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, really? No, I want to say no, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you have long, beautiful hair. So I'm sure. Extensions. You know, it's fake. I have horrible, weak, little, fine hair. These are extensions. <laughs> well, but thank you for thinking so. <laughs> They're very good extension. Thank you. <laughs> so she cuts off all this hair and I'm starting to go a little wild inside, but I just keep hearing it's perfect. Don't worry about it. It's perfect. And she styles it at the end and it's voila. And I'm thinking, wow, really, is this, is this the look? And I'm like, don't like, don't overreact. Just, just go home. <laughs> so I go home and my husband's like, I think we need to go up to the lake this weekend. I have a client that needs um, some work done and I just want to fit it in on the weekend. And I think it'll be really beautiful up there with all the snow. And I said, perfect, because I have to shoot this little video clip and I want to do it outside in the snow. And the snow up there is absolutely amazing. So um, in the day before, I'm in a department store and I'm trying to pay for something and my credit card won't work and my debit card won't work and the chip won't work. And as a store owner in an intuitive and psychic business, when people's credit cards don't work, it's usually an electronic interference and you have to figure out the reason. And as soon as you do, your credit card will work. So I'm looking at everything in front of me under the till and they're yelling at me, the snowflake, the snowflake, the snowflake. And I'm like, for goodness sake, I have a snowflake brooch like this you told me to buy that I'm never going to wear. I have a snowflake clip with three snowflakes attached to it that I'm never going to wear. And now you want me to buy this single matching snowflake just because I'm like, I, I really don't want to do this. Sure enough, I said, I'll take the snowflake. All of a sudden the card works. So I go home, my husband and I go up to the lake and lo and behold, I have these toques. And I have this sweater that my mother-in-law knitted for me last year. Actually, she didn't knit it for me. She knit it for like to give away. And I walked into her house and I saw it lying there. I said, oh my goodness, that is the most beautiful sweater I've ever seen. And she goes, really, you like it? And I said, yes. And I said, what are you doing with it? And she goes, well, I'm just going to donate it. And I said, please, please don't donate it. Please give it to me for donate Christmas. It. Mm -hmm. Donate it to me. And so she gave it to me for Christmas that year. And that, that's the sweater that I'm wearing in the video. And I need a toque. So I have this black toque and I get that I need to pin the snowflake onto the front of the tube, but I have to wear the tube backwards because I'm not going to wear these bright glitzy, you know, sunglasses that my friend would wear in the video. So I turn it backwards. So I shoot this video. Long story, but we'll get back to. So that night after you and I do the video, I'm wondering how we got so off track, why I didn't answer any of your questions. Yes, you did. <laughs> why you revealed, you know, some personal details about yourself and all these different things. And um, we go and we do a bunch of running. Oh, just a second. I need to keep telling you about the events leading up because I don't think what happened is that night following the video at 9 p.m. at night, everything clicked into place. And that's when the miracle happened, how and why I realized all these events. So I'm telling you all the details leading up to the event so that when I share the story with you, you'll be able to see how they all click into connect. place. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That... Got it. I'm with you. I'm here. Okay. So it's Sunday night. I've shot the snowflake video outside. My husband has to go back to the job site in the snow on Monday morning for a few hours. And so I'm, I'm just doing some work. And then it's time to go back to civilization, back to the city. And my husband's like, I have to load the scaffolding. I can't not load the scaffolding in the truck before we go back to the city. I'm like, really? Okay. So I load the scaffolding. We drive back to the warehouse, which is three or four hours in the opposite direction. We pack orders all day at the warehouse. We come back to the city and I realize I don't know how to use, you know, my computer for this interview. So my husband and I decide to go to an electronic store at seven or eight o'clock at night. And we haven't eaten. And it's been a very, very long day. And I walk into my first electronic store ever. And I ask the guy, well, I get because I get told where I need to go. So I get told to go to this back corner over here. And it's not looking like anything we need. And this guy comes up and asks if he can help us. And I'm just getting this feeling that he's not the right guy. I don't like him. I don't 
trust him. I don't feel like he's the person to solve all my electronic things and then, you know, issues in the next half hour <laughs> for this thing after a very long day. And I hear, just give him a chance, you know, just give him a chance. So he's like, he goes away and does a couple things and he comes back and he goes, I have just the person you need to talk to. <laughs> and I'm like, thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, just give him a chance. It's not the right person. And I know it's but not the right person, but guide he, you mm-hmm. to the right person. So we go opposite direction of the store and he takes me to this young guy who is um he hooks us up with a bunch of electronics and I won't go into the rest of that story and we get home and it's really late we're really hungry we're really tired and we're driving into the parkade we live in a um in a loft so it's like a communal parkade and my husband who's one of the best drivers in the whole entire world probably forgets that he has a scaffolding in the back of his truck So we go down like into the bottom part and we hit the sprinkler system for the building and the entire fire sprinkler system for the 130 condos in our place goes off and there's water spewing everywhere, filling the entire parkade. And my husband with his new truck and then it crashes down and it hits my husband's truck and there's this accident and my husband's president of the condo board and he's very visual, you know, like he's very, everyone he is, and he's a contractor and he's very professional. And this is like the most horrific, you know, thing that can be happening to him. And the fire trucks are called and it's after hours and the sprinkler, you know, people are called. So it's this huge, huge deal. Meanwhile, we've gone to um, the country and picked up a whole bunch of meat from an organic um, butcher out in the country on our way back was another stop. Um, for Christmas and for gifts for people and all this stuff and we don't have a freezer but my mother-in-law lives in the building and so we have all these boxes that are now soaked these cardboard boxes soaked in this water and my husband's losing his crap and meanwhile I get a text because a few hours earlier I hear you know who you need to do your hair to fix you know the the original hair that we were talking about 10 minutes ago your cousin, my cousin has a hair salon two and a half hours from here, call her and see if she can redo your hair and do extensions for you for all the length that was cut off. So I text her. And in the split second after we hit the fire sprinkler, she texts back and says, Hey, give me a call. What do you have in mind? And I'm thinking to myself, is she supposed to do my hair? You know, because we're in the middle of this total accident crisis. So fast forward, I carry all these boxes of this meat, what this milk, meat? up to my mother-in-law's to stick in her freezer. And she's standing there at the thing and she's fuming and she's furious because fire sprinklers do occasionally get pulled in our building, usually on Saturday nights, usually at three in the morning. And this had happened two nights ago and we weren't there. And my mother-in-law is fuming and she's like, who needs to be driving around or no, who needs to be partying it up at nine o'clock on a Monday night, totally pissed out of their tree and pulling the fire sprinkler. And I look at her and I said, your son, (laughs) and she doesn't even know how to process this. Right. But so, so I take the meat, we put it into a freezer. I go back down. We deal with that for the next couple hours. And then I'm like, I can't decide about my hair. Like there's just way too much. So at 3 AM, like four hours after this experience, Spirit wakes me up and they're like, time to get to work. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I really, I just want a few more hours of sleep. So I come down to my computer and I do a whole bunch of stuff until like eight in the morning. And they're like, don't get your cousin to do your hair. You need a wake. And I'm like, I need a wake. Okay. So the place that I live is probably like the Midwestern United States. You know, they like hair colors and funky hair colors and wigs. Like we just don't have stuff like that. And where are you again exactly? Just to let her. Well, know. I don't really want people to know. Oh, but, okay. Well, well, let's say um, central, central Canada. Perfect. That so were the prairies. And I'm looking for wigs and there's nothing. And this, and then I go to another store and they're not open. And then they send me to a third store and I can't find anything in the city. And you can't really even buy extensions right now with everything that's going on. I've heard their backlog for like six months or a year. And I'm still hearing, don't go to your cousin, don't go to your cousin. And it says, call this person. So I know someone who wears wigs and I'm supposed to call them to find out how and where to get a wig. Um, they have alopecia so that they don't have hair. Yeah. So I call this person and this conversation ensues and it's a miraculous conversation that really, really needed to happen 
um, that changed the course of a bunch of different lives. And I don't feel like I can go into the details of it, but it was just really, really important and crystal clear. And I hung up the phone and it says, now get on the phone and call your cousin and make that hair appointment. So this is 1030 in the morning. And she's like, I have an opening at 130. Get down here now so I can check out your hair. And when the salon closes at seven o'clock that night, I can do your hair. So I'm basically in my pajamas from 3 a.m. from, you know, the sprinkler the night before from (laughs) all this drive down to Regina, get my hair done. And my mom happens to be down there and my aunt and I meet them for a few hours and they want to take me into some store shopping. And I'm like, and they're like, your hair won't be done till, you know, 11 o'clock at night. So why don't you spend the night with us? Your mom's already here. You guys can share a bed. And I'm like, okay, great. But I don't have pajamas. You know, it's been a lot of years (laughs) since I slept with my mom in the same bed. And I hear, don't worry, you can buy pajamas. So I want to tell them, you know, just take me someplace where I can just buy a pair of pajamas. And instead my aunt is like, I know the perfect place we can go. So she takes us into this high-end decor store and we walk in and she goes, oh my God, what do you think of these? And I'm like, they're absolutely beautiful. And I look at the price tag and it's a hundred dollars for the top and a hundred dollars for the bottom. And it's a pair of pajamas. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. And so this is after doing my hair on Thursday, Mm -hmm. doing my hair on Monday, you know, like all this stuff. And I'm, and with Christmas, I'm like really $200 on a pair of pajamas so I can spend the night with my mom. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's your mom's clothes. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And they're like, so anyways, um, my mom is like, well, I was going to spend a hundred dollars on your Christmas gift. So do you want the top? And I'm like, oh my goodness. Yes. And my aunt is like, and I feel like I'm just supposed to give you some money. So she gave me some money for the bottoms. So I have these pajamas and I get my hair done. Um, my cousin's salon is called mirror mirror, uh, after the fairy tale, like mirror mirror on the mm-hmm. wall. And she does this fabulous hairdo for me. And I come back up to Sas. Oh, <laughs> I come back up here. And the next, so we do the shooting with you. And um, by the way, we spent 11 hours setting up the video camera and the microphone that we bought from this guy. And we were sitting in front of it hours and hours before it worked and everything worked. And then, and then when we started, it was, we couldn't get, get it started. It just wasn't. (laughs) And so it totally threw my brain. So it's been, you know, very long week, long night. It's again, nine o'clock at night following our video thing. So this Mm -hmm. is where the magic starts to make sense. And I'm wondering why we talk. Okay. So we sit down, my husband, we don't have television, but we do have YouTube. So we just find stuff on there. And my husband finds this series or this role of three's company. Do you know the the old? Yeah. Chrissy, is Chrissy Snow and uh, Janet and yes, Ropers. (laughs) Love it. Okay. So Christy walks into the set and she is wearing a toque covered in snowflakes at the top. And she turns around and on the back of her head is sunglass, sunglasses imprinted on her toque. This is from 1980. 1980. This is from, Come on. Yeah. February 4th. I think it aired 1980. And I'm looking at her saying, you've got no. to be, yeah. And, um, my husband's name is Christoph and her first name is Chrissy. And the water that I sell makes snowflakes in the bottle. And her name is Chrissy Snow. And I'm like, get out. This is like wild. And I'm like, perfect. This is exactly how we need to unwind and relax yeah. after this week. So then um, the reason her and Jack are going skiing and Janet got a promotion. And Janet wants to use the money for the promotion to renovate Chrissy in her bedroom. But she she starts off by talking about this woman she knows who's getting artificially inseminated by a man because she's desperate to have a baby. And you remember what we yeah, discussed? Yeah, of course. But, but this yeah. is 1980s. I didn't even know they talked about that on TV. I, know. I don't know. I, yeah. like, uh, I was like, I thought this, uh, that exactly. Right? Like I thought that happened like 2000. I didn't know it existed in the eighties, but okay. Right. And so we watched this and I'm like, this is so weird. And then the next one comes on And it's about Chrissy and she's using weird and random things to buy lotto tickets at the racetrack. So this is, the first one was called And Baby Makes Two and it was season four, episode 19. The next one that came on is called The Root of All Evil and it was the 22nd episode. So season four, episode 22. 
And Chrissy, um, she bets on two racehorses and one is called Broken Elevator because she used to go to her aunt's and the elevator was always broken. And she bets on another one. Okay. And she wins $1,600 and she decides to split it 50, 50, 50, or like, you know, three ways. Three of them. Mm-hmm. And they all decide to keep the money. So Janet goes out. So when we sat down to watch TV, my husband goes, oh my God, Jacqueline, what, what did you do today? And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, there's like something all over the couch. He goes, what are these crushed grapes? And I'm like, I have no idea. I said, I haven't been on the couch today. I wasn't even here last night. I said, did you have grapes last night? And he goes, oh my goodness. And I spilled the bowl. So my husband spilled his bowl of grapes, proceeded to sit on them and the couch all night. And my husband's like, what are these crushed grapes? So back to three's company, Chrissy goes to buy she goes to take the money. And what does she go out and buy? She spends $75 in 1980 out of the $1,600 that they won on a bottle of expensive wine. And she goes, well, at least it's not crushed grapes is how she justifies it. Oh my God. Chrissy gets mad. So Chrissy goes out and makes a purchase. And what she comes home with was a $200 stuffed giraffe. And I'm thinking about how we talked about giraffes. 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 Yes. Yes. You know, hours earlier. Yeah. And then Jack gets upset. So Jack decides that he's going to go out and buy an expensive jogging suit. And I'm thinking about Jack and I'm thinking about this $200 sweatsuit jogging suit at my aunt's a few days. God, yes. Mm -hmm. And they're all fighting and they're fighting so much. They go to a therapist and the therapist ends up charging them the rest of the $1,600 to solve their problem. And how he does it is they end up on the floor beating the blip 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 out of a pillow and these feathers explode everywhere and in the spiritual world these feathers are feathers are angels okay and I'm looking at these and what I don't have time to tell you is the parallels of how that entire episode fit into my life and my entire business structure and these different business arrangements that I was in the process of making with friends and colleagues and it just opened up this whole wave of energy and um enlightenment and things that I based my next hours and several days rearranging how I was structuring everything. So that's what a miracle looks like. It's just little bits of random information that seemingly make no sense, but and you put, but yeah. clearly makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And you wow. have to pay attention and you pay have to attention. pay attention and connect the dots. So yeah. there's the advice of the day. All right. We have to. And especially, you know, we got uh, Christmas coming here, um, you know, for those that celebrate in two days, we have the new year. There's so many miraculous things happening. It just feels miraculous this season, right? Yeah. Now, yes. we, unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, yes. What do you want to leave with the listeners here for the holiday? Just realize that magic is all around you and look for ways instead of discounting it or wanting more proof for how you feel it should look like trust that what you're seeing is already the magic and it is a miracle and appreciate and accept and try and understand it. Perfect. Jacqueline, tell us how we can get in touch with you. Uh, VitaJewel.ca, V-I-T-A-J-U-W-E-L.ca. Perfect. Uh, have a great Christmas. You celebrate? Yeah, or Christmas. Of course. Good. Absolutely. Merry Christmas. I just Merry don't want to offend anyone. So Merry Christmas yeah. uh, to you and your husband. And what a great story. And I love Three's Company. I can't believe you brought that up. I like <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorites. I haven't watched it in years. I didn't even realize it was on YouTube. I'm going to check it out this weekend when I get a break. <laughs> yeah, you can check out And Baby Makes Two, season four, episode 19. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I okay. uh, have a great day, a great yeah. holiday, and to all of our listeners, the same. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. 
This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.